goodness. Your goodness is running after me. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after me. It's running after me. My life, when my life lay down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after me. It's running after me. Sing all my life. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, and I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing. Come on, sing it out. Worship, worship. Oh, the goodness of God. Last time, last time, I will sing. But I will sing of the goodness of God.
just tell them that. Oh, we've seen you move. Oh, we want to see it again. That's what we desire. See you move in this house. See you move in this city, Jesus. Let your spirit flow. Come on, just tell them. Oh, we want to see your spirit move. Oh, we're not satisfied, God, until we see you move, God. Until we see you move, God. Hearts returning to you, Jesus. Let's sing this out together. We see what you can do.
every strong oak will crumble. I hear the chains hit the ground. Oh, God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. In the darkest night, you can light it up. You can light it up. Oh, God of revival, let really feeling this morning, guys. I'm just really feeling this in my spirit that if you are here today and you need God to revive something, maybe it's just that we, we talked about the fire. Lord, give us a heart of fire. Maybe it's that. Maybe it's just saying, Lord, I need fire again. I've just been so dry lately. I need something. I, I want to encourage you today. I know Marcus does this sometimes where he has people come up front. I'm going to ask you, if that's you today, and it can be whatever it is, whatever God's speaking to you right now, saying, God, I, I need revival in my life, some kind of revival. It could be a relationship you need revived. It could be a situation you need revived. It could be whatever, whatever God's speaking to you right now. I want you to come up front, and just we're going to sing this just a little bit more. I want you to, I want you just to begin to just worship. Say, Lord, just begin to revive inside of me, God. God of revival, revive inside of me. God of revival, God of revival, in the darkest night, you can light it up, you can light it up, oh God of revival, let hope arise. Death is overcome, you've already won, oh God of revival, sing that again, in the darkest night, you can light it up.
I'm here to chase. Cause I hear those chains falling. Cause I hear those chains falling. Come on, sing it out. Cause I hear those chains falling. I hear those chains falling. song guys as we do if you're up here today saying lord revive me this next song is i want you just to worship 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 this is what it's all about say lord here i am come fill me up god we want you lord
Today I make a declaration, today I make a decree that those who enter into this house would no longer die because they are thirsty or because they are hungry. That when you enter into this house, you will begin to live because you are thirsty. You will begin to live because you are hungry.
for the one and only true God. There's a difference. As we were worshiping, I heard the Lord say this. Run your race. Some of us have been looking to the left and we've been looking to the right and we've been comparing ourselves to others and how well they're doing and condemning our own lives for Christ. Speaking things over ourselves, what God isn't doing in our lives. Did you know that when you begin to speak those things over your life, you begin to blind yourself from what God is doing? But I heard the Lord say, run your race. Some of us are fatigued in this hour. Some of us are tired in this hour. But do you know that God is as much as in your valley as he is on your mountaintop? He is as much in your valley. In fact, he is even more in your valley than he is on your mountaintop. In 2 Timothy 4, it says, verse 7, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. In the future there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, Jesus himself, will award you on that day. And not only to me, but to also to all who have loved his appearing. Hebrews 12, therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us. How many of you have a cloud of witnesses surrounding you? How many of you, you would not be where you are today if it wasn't for people who have surrounded you that had moved on? Those who love Christ, who have prayed for you, grandmas, grandpas, aunts, and uncles. Let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which easily so entangles us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. You know, in this race for Christ, you know what it requires of us sometimes? The Lord showed me the picture of when I was in the military. How many of you have been in the military? Went through basic training. I went into basic training. I doubted I would even finish. And I remember the last physical exam that I took was the two-mile exam. I had to run two miles. And all the way up to that point, every time I ran a mile, two, three, four, five miles, I hurt, and I hurt, and I hurt, and I hurt. But when it came test time, I ran so hard. I ran so hard, and I never stopped for the very first time. But along the way, I wanted to quit. I wanted to stop, but I knew this was my race. I wasn't in group A, those who were running their six, seven minute miles. I was in group B, but I blocked all of that out and I said, I'm going to run my race. I'm going to run my best time. And you know what it required? I threw up as I went. Most people would have stopped and they would have just threw up. I'm sorry for using that language. I'm just trying to give you a picture. But as I ran, I, kept, I was throwing up as I went. Because I know what my race required of me. You have a purpose. Each one of you have a purpose. And sometimes we don't come up here and we don't seek the corporate encounter with God because we forget who our what our purpose is 
We think our purpose is to come to church and to sit in our pews and think that God doesn't require nothing of us. When I owe him everything, I owe him everything. You have a purpose. Might I remind you of that purpose? We are the fire church. We have a purpose, not only for you, but for this city. I truly believe we are called to bring fire to this city. Holy Spirit fire to this city. No one should come into this building and not experience the burning bush. No one should come into this place and not experience revival fire. I hold you accountable to that, to be hungry, to be thirsty for God all the days of your life. And we're going to go into this song, and I pray the Holy Spirit convicts you that are you living a Worth a, worth a life worth living are you living a life on fire for Jesus and you don't even have to understand it get the theology out of your mind we're looking for encounter today encounter that is true church that is real church because as Ashley said last week along the lines revelation Without transformation. Think about that. We all want revelation. We want to see the supernatural things of God. But what God is looking for is transformation in your life. Has your life been transformed by the encounter? Has that revelation changed your mind about things? About how you see God? in a more healthy way. So we're gonna go into this next song. And I wanna encourage you, never be comfortable. Never, never be comfortable in the Lord. Because why would the Holy Spirit be called the comforter? He is the comforter. Therefore, he's the comforter. You ought to be uncomfortable in your walk. Run your race. If you felt a lack of purpose in your life lately, a sense of purpose, you need reminded. I want you to come forward today. Let our prayer team pray for you. Everybody today needs to leave with a sense of purpose. Come. Everybody needs to leave today with a sense of purpose. Father, encounter your people today. Lord, encounter them today. Father, I pray that as where they sit, Lord, that they would open their hearts to you like they have in no other time. Lord, send revival fire into their lives. Lord, where they've been been praying for change, let change begin to happen now. Lord, let them be transformed by the renewing of their mind. Lord, take them to deeper levels today. I pray, Lord, that you would pour, release courage on your people today, Lord, to step out, to step out into the new, the new thing that you're doing. Lord, give them courage. Give them courage, Lord. Give them boldness, Lord. I pray that you will release visions today. Lord, that you will release supernatural. And those that need healing in their bodies, raise your hand right now. If you need healing in your body right now, prayer team, surround them right now. Surround them right now. This young man right here, I need two people to surround him right now. Dan, right here, two people to surround him. We're living on purpose, people. We're living on purpose. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, release healing. Release healing, Lord. 
emotional healing, Lord. I pray you give strategies, Lord, for their lives right now. Lord, to get them out of the pit that they've been in. Oh, Lord Jesus, reach your hand out to their, their lives right now. Pull them out. Pull them out, Lord. Show your glory. Let your glory increase in their lives. Let the glory increase, God. Make the rule and reign of heaven fall on them. Your rule and reign. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Anybody else? Thank you, Jesus. If you're, if you're on fire for Jesus, I want you to surround this young man right now. If you're on fire for Jesus, you surround him right now. This man wants the fire of God right here. Surround this young man.
taste, I will taste and see that you are good. Yes, I will taste, see that you are good. I will taste, see that you are good. You're so good to me. So come to the river. I see someone with a grandmother or a mother, but she's an elderly person. You've been praying for her. You have not raised your hand yet. I want you to raise your hand if you've been praying for your mother or she, she's an elderly person. But you need you you want somebody to agree with you for her, for her healing. I want you to raise your hand. We want to agree with you. If you have a mother or a grandmother who needs healing in her body right now, Raise your hand right here. Prayer team, let's surround Brian right here. Agree with him. Anybody else? Wendy, let's surround Wendy here. I need at least two people. Come. Anybody else? I have Michael in the back, right here. I need two people over there. If you're on the prayer team, surround them. Yeah, I'm going to go somewhere. Take someone with you, Bert. Moses said that that it was God's presence that that's how the people of Israel could be distinguished was by God's presence on their lives I had a young man ask me one time what is the most important what do you need God more for and I said his presence if God's presence doesn't go before me, if His presence is not with me, is if His presence is not on this body, then we'll look just like everybody else. Powerless. Religion. A form without power. We really believe God is real. We really believe here that God will move in our midst. And He loves you and He loves your families. And He desires to release heaven through you for your families and for your workplaces. Some of you can't stay in your workplaces right now when God's dropped you right there. But you don't know how to follow Christ in that area in your workplace to bring the light of God and if that's you come forward sometimes we're just one encounter away from God for him to change everything I love atheists I love atheists you know why because God can do a miracle in their life and everything changes they are the easiest people to convert they are easier people to convert than the religious ones 
come right here. Come Hyman, right here. Bond. These people want to make a change in their marketplace, in the marketplace, their employers. If you have influence in your business, in the marketplace for the kingdom of God, and people see the light of Christ on you, and they honor you and they respect you, I want you to surround them right now. And I want you to pray for them. I want you to release what's on your life. I want you to release the light of God on their lives. We're not going to have an encounter here today and not be transformed. Things are going to change. Pray. Pray. Come. Release the light of God. Lord, turn the lights on. Turn the lights on, Jesus. You are the light of the world. You are the... You have made them, caused them to be a light shining set on a hill for all to see. Yes, Lord. I pray that they are the most blessed person in their business, Lord. The most blessed person in their jobs. Father, we release favor on them. Favor. 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 Favor, favor, favor. Come. If you need anything, one last chance. If you need anything from God today, let us agree with you. Come, come, call it out. your race I want everyone to just put your hand on your heart if you feel like you need to put it on your head do that and say Lord Jesus by the power of your Holy Spirit help me to run my race to run my race not anyone else's you have called me to the nations. You have called me to run my course. I have my very own course in you. May I bring you glory by the way I run my race for you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a hand. Lord, we thank you for your presence. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing today.
And Lord, we just expect testimonies to see your light expanded, Lord, in our realms of influence. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless you. It's um, interesting how you have something prepared for today and all of a sudden it gets changed. <laughs> and you find out that you're not really prepared for it, right? So um, let me take this out because I don't need it no more. And um, I was uh, reading on the widow that gave the two mites. And one of the things that um, I saw was her heart to give. Her heart was aligned to the, to the heart of God. That was the, the, the thing that attracted Jesus the most. Because everybody gave large quantities, right? The Pharisees gave large quantities, but she only gave the two mites that she has left, right? So we should give with a right heart. Now, in Matthew 5, 23, it says, says, Therefore, if you are presenting your offerings at the altar, and there you remember that, you, that your brother has something against you, leave your offering there before the altar and go first and reconcile to your brother, and then come and present your offerings. So I'm putting my offerings at the altar. This has not been a... This has been a very devastating week, not only for me, but a lot of people. And um, doing according to what the word of God says, I want to apologize to Tiffany because I did something and I says something to her that hurt her. And at the same time, I was affected by it. And um, we're doing communion today, and I thought that I aligned my heart to the heart of God to be able to accept the communion and do the communion as God wants to. And also because I want my offerings and tithes to be, go up to the Lord with a sweet smell of perfume. So I want to apologize to Tiffany. I'm sorry, Tiffany, for everything that happened. I hope that you find that in your heart to forgive me. And um, in the same way, I want to ask that if any of you, according to what I read, have anything against your brother or your sister, to go to them and ask for forgiveness, you know, so that everything that we offer to God could go. And when Jesus receives it, receives it with joy as he received those two mites that that lady gave. So we're going to be doing communion today. So as you come down and as God has put it placed in your heart to give, when you come up for you to give your offerings and your tithes, please come up to one of the sides and, and pick up, right, to do communion. Thank you.
Amen. So, um, okay, so who, who did you decide is serving? Those who know that are serving, we please serve on each side. Um, now, so Will and I didn't coordinate this, but the Lord was speaking to me this morning, which, by the way, I guess you don't know I'm doing the um, communion. Um, he was speaking to me this morning about remembering um, before you take communion to, to check your heart. You know, Paul talks about that. So check your heart. And that's, Will didn't know I was bringing that, and he already brought it. So I'm not going to cover that. But we do ask you, everyone, come and um, as you're coming, please get your communion. And we're going to take it together, okay? Because um, I want to cover some things. It'll be short, I promise. I want to give Sharon as much time as possible. Um, so um, the Lord was talking to me specifically. Um, I'm going to read the two main scriptures for communion. Um, he's talking to me about Matthew 26, 26 through 28, and I'm going to read it. Um, and I'm going to read it, I'm reading it in the Amplified. Now, as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body. And when he had taken the cup and given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new and better covenant, which ratifies the agreement and being and is being poured out for many as a substitutionary atonement for forgiveness of all sins. Now the Lord talked to me about that for a second, so I want to talk to y'all. So he started talking to me about if we only understood what this covenant does. What if we only understood what taking taking communion does? It the so he asked me to actually read this to you. Ratifies and it speaks about that in, let me read the other one first, and then I'm going to talk about it. So in Luke 22, 19 and 20, it says, And when he had taken bread and given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, and which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup, after they had eaten and said, This cup, is, which is poured out for you, it is the new covenant. It's ratified in my blood. So the Lord asked me to look up ratified. And so ratified... It's a sign, I'm going to have to read my own handwriting. It's a, it's a, it's a sign or a, um, a formal consent to a treaty contract or agreement, making it officially valid. Does that make sense to y'all? That is a legal binding document that he had. He ratified that document. He changed it. The old covenant was the Abrahamic covenant, right? Well, he ratified that covenant with a new and better covenant, Right? And a covenant is an agreement. It's a legal contract. So you understand we have a legal contract when we take this. And he's saying do it, do it in remembrance of him, right? And so we could tell you so many stories of people. I don't know if you guys make taking this communion lifestyle, but I would encourage you to make it a lifestyle. Some people do it, um, you know, like weekly. Some people do it daily. I've heard p amazing testimonies of people who need a healing. They took it every day because what it does is it reminds the enemy and the Lord of his promises, right? We're just binding. We're getting an agreement. We're saying, nope, I believe Jesus. This is what I'm doing, right? Because what is he? He's the healer. So we're believing him for that. And it's a legal contract and the enemy absolutely hates it. Okay. So y'all need to remember that when we do it. So I'm going to get me some real quick. And as my daughter laughs at me from the way back yonder. Um, so, um, Lord, oh, he's even saying to me, hold me to my covenant. Oh, my God. Man, I feel that. I hope y'all can feel that. Whoo. So, Lord, we are holding you to your covenant. You know, don't think this is weird, but I felt like you just asked me to do this. Um. He asked me to ask you to stand and, and take this covenant because it's like standing in agreement under it. Who, Lord, we take this bread, agreeing with your covenant, your contract, your assignment over us. Lord, everything this bread does, reminding us of who you are, we take it and say yes and amen. Take the bread. And Lord, with this blood, Lord, your blood, if we understood what it does for, 
it does, it does so much stuff. I encourage you guys to read up on that. But Lord, your blood breaks, your blood breaks every curse, every tie, every spell. Lord, we thank you that it heals, it heals and seals the deal. That's what I just heard him say. It heals and seals the deal. So, Lord, we take your blood in remembrance of you and we say yes and amen to everything your blood did then and now. Take and drink. Lord, we, Jesus, we just love you. We thank you for that. We, Lord, I just encourage, Lord, everyone that needs to do this on a more natural, normal basis, you would speak to their heart on the, on the um, often, how often it's done. That it's not just take, we take it here court, you know, every month. But Lord, if you want us to do that in our families or something about, he was talking to me earlier about doing it within families. And so Lord, however you want that to look, you'll encourage them to do that. We love you, Lord. We thank you for that. Amen. Amen. So um, thank you guys for taking it and standing under it. Thank you. Okay. So um, I also have the honor of um, doing announcements. So I'm a little rattled. So y'all just roll with it. Roll with me. Um, so um, this Wednesday, we're going to relaunch Wednesday nights. Woohoo! Is everybody excited? Yeah. We're going to play some games. We're going to just have a big game night. I'm actually excited. It's going to be awesome. And I don't know. It's going to look awesome. I don't know exactly what God's going to do, but it's going to be great. Um, I do want to mention those of you who happened to, did everybody notice the worship flaggers going on up here? Woohoo! If anybody's interested in that, Miss Barb's going to love me. Wave your hand. Stand up. Pretty, pretty lady. She's going to be, she's going to be doing a teaching on that next Saturday, August 6th at 10 a.m. So please come if you're interested. She's going to teach on it. We are really re encouraging folks that feel led to do that to get some training. There are protocols in place. We don't want people getting whacked in the head and there's, we just want it all done well. So just um, come on Saturday. See Barb if you have any questions. We'd love it. Oh, so for, oh yes, please, on Wednesday night, bring, bring snacky finger food. Um, we definitely want to share in all that and have fun. It's going to be a good night. We're going to have big corporate games and, and little group games. It's going to be fun. So don't forget to bring snacks. Um, the men's meeting. <laughs> Love that. Um, sorry, I'm laughing because I, the, there's a typo and it's meeting like meat, not. <laughs> anyway, makes me laugh. Oh, is it? Men's meeting. Oh, haha. -ha. Punny. Okay, y'all are punny. Um, so it's going to be at Castaneda. So Catherine, raise your hand. I don't see Marcus. Oh, Marcus is back there. Wave. It's, we're having the men's meeting at Marcus's and Catherine's. Um, Marcus is going to provide the meat. Um, everyone attending, volunteer for certain items. Just get with them about side items. I want to make sure they don't have dupes of things. And, and y'all can, the, the guys like to eat. Don't y'all like to eat? I'm, I'm telling you. I got people going, yeah, I would like to eat. Um, okay, so girls' church. Um, oh, sorry, the men's meeting is August 13th, 5 to 8. See one of the Castanetas, please. Um, girls' church, um, we've got this cool name for it this time. We haven't done one in a bit. So girls' church, who are you and why are you here? Isn't that a good one? Who are you and why are you here? It's Friday night, August 19th at 630 here at the church. Um, we'd love to see you. Come on out. And we're going to do snacks for that one, too, bring, bring extras. The church always does something, but it's always good to have extras to make sure everybody's got something to eat. Um, we also have Greg, Crawf Greg Crawford um, at the School of the Prophets and Seers, Saturday, August 27th from 1 at 1 and then 6 and then on Sunday at 10. No registration. It's going to be really good. He's been praying for it. He's advertising for it, too. It's going to be awesome. And um, we're looking forward to it. And... Um, I hear some of you might have come because you thought Kat was here. I'm sorry, Kat, that was an old taping, and that is not um, this week. But Kat is coming. Um, she's all, she comes yearly, at least once. Um, so if you ever want to know what's going on here in this house, and you're not part of this house, just get on the email list so we can keep you informed of when we've got special guests. I know we have um, the power explosion coming up the end of the year. It's um, November 10th through the 13th. It's going to be super awesome. It's going to be David Hogan, Charlie and Bryn Champ, and Jesse Champ. So we got a huge weekend planned for that. That's the 10th through the 13th. So get on the email list so when those things come out, we can notify you um, when there's, the events are happening. Um, and so I think um, Monday night, just FYI, there's no intercessory prayer. We're going to kind of revamp that and see what it's going to look like. Um, there's a sign-up sheet for evangelism. 
So Marcus has taken out a team. So anybody that's interested in that, these will be on my desk over here. Um, he wants to take out a team. They're going to do it on Saturdays. And he'll fill you in if you have any questions. Get with him. And last but not least, I'm, I get to introduce Sharon. Oh, do you want to say? She was, she was, she didn't want to do this. She can't help herself. I wasn't going to get up here today. I was just like sitting and taking a day off. But anyway, and I wanted to share something else too, okay? Uh, this is, uh, the Lord wanted me to share this. So yesterday afternoon, Charlie Champ starts messaging me on Facebook. And I know Charlie, and that, you know, it was no big deal. And like, it was almost like it was God speaking himself. And I was like, Charlie, what do you know? And you're not telling me, like, you're telling me something here. And then as we went on, I mean, I guess we chatted off and on for about an hour. And then he says, God says you're supposed to sow 500 some odd dollars a month into a certain orphanage. And I went, wait a minute. <laughs> I just opened an orphanage in Kenya. So, and then he said, oh, no, you're to, to stop doing that. And you're supposed to give to this one. So I texted Charlie and said, are you messaging me on Facebook? He said, no, they've done it again. They've come up with a hoax. <laughs> and I was like, but who, this fake guy, so I messaged the guy back, and I said, you're fake, go away. But you know, God used him to speak to me. Like, I was like, I know this guy's a fake, he's evil, he's trying to steal money from people, but God used him. So my word to you is, the rocks will cry out to you. <laughs> God will use whatever to speak to you, and he'll use a donkey. So if the donkey speaks, listen. Okay, if it rings true with your spirit and you believe you needed to hear that, receive it. Because I was shocked. I said, Charlie, this dude just, it's almost like he read my mail. And I don't know, but I know it was just like he, this, whoever this was, was evil. So I wanted to say that. And I wanted to introduce Sharon. My children, sorry, thank you for all that. I said I wasn't going to get up here. Um, my children have grown up under Sharon Miner's ministry. And I see the fruit in their lives of what she carries. She is a powerful woman of God. And many of you don't know her and you don't see her because if you don't have kids, you may not see her because she's always in the children's ministry. She has served faithfully for years and years here. And she's been through a lot. We've been through a lot. She has stood faithful and true. And I don't know what I'd do without her, honestly. We are honored to have her and she's carrying a lot, but... Our children had some major encounters, you know, and she's going to share about that today. The kids are going to share, and I'm really excited about it because when God moves on our kids, we know revival's here. So, Sharon, come on up. Stand and just give her some honor. Thank you so much. Well, you know I love, I love being with you guys, and uh, oh, thank you. My good friend Catherine brought me brought me some mints. I was like, "Are there mints anywhere?" <laughs> um, if you um, if you're one of our kids here and you came to camp or you didn't come to camp, um, but especially if you came to camp, would you guys come on up here? Come sit up here. If you came to camp with us, uh, maybe a couple of our youth just help with a little bit of crowd control. <laughs> we're gonna give these guys a, we're gonna give these guys a chance to share. A little bit. It, oh, come have a seat. You can sit down. You don't have to like stand up awkwardly the whole time. You just have to sit down awkwardly. <laughs> hey, you can move over this way. Hey, oh, look, there's a whole other half of the stage. Oh, or you could squish in over there. All right, squishing is good too. Have you ever asked a group of people to make a circle? It's fantastic. Apparently, our, our youth have not gotten that down in the past several years. They can't make a circle. So we're doing, they're, they're just preparing for youth. <laughs> Anyway, well, we did have a fantastic time at camp. Um, I know not all of our, our youth and helpers and kids are here. Samuel, you're welcome to come up if you want to. And Anna, if you guys want to come sit with them, you don't have to. You're welcome to come on up. You don't have to have gone to camp. But these are some of our just fantastic, fantastic kids. Well, um, our theme this year was... Uh, <laughs> I just forgot it. Our, th our theme this year was about the kingdom, and it was about kingdom secrets, and that within that, there was a secret of destiny, and that we were going to discover what our destiny was throughout the week. Well, we only did four of our five, and you guys get the fifth one today, which is the secret of destiny, because <laughs> we knew we were going to get to be here with you today. 
And um, so I just wanted to share with you the first day. Are you ready for me, Bill? I gave Bill some slides this morning. So if you'll hang with us, he's not used to people giving him so many things. <laughs> I always hand him a pile of things. Here you go, Bill. <laughs> um, first thing we talked about was the secret of friendship. And we talked about this. Oh, can you get it on the back screen? Because I was counting on... No, maybe. All right. Well, here, I'm just going to turn a little bit sideways. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. The secret of friendship is I don't have to be alone. I am stronger with others. And we talked about how within the context of relationship with friends, with family, and with the Lord, that we don't have to be alone, that there are times that we are going to be, um, we're going to feel lonely, but we are never alone because Jesus is always with us and that he's put us with people, that there are people that we can stand with and that we're going to are going to stand with us. Then we also talked about the secret of forgiveness. And Miss Ayana did just an amazing job. She, she did an escape room with them. <laughs> and uh, she talked about how forgiveness is something that we give. And it's something that we, we can't hold on to. And the, and the kids asked a lot of questions, like, you know, the questions that the disciples asked. How many times do I have to forgive somebody? <laughs> You know, how do, we, how do we forgive people when they just hurt us over and over again? And she talked about how just because we forgive somebody doesn't mean that what they did is right, but it means we don't hold that debt against them anymore. And that is a hard truth, isn't it? How many of you guys still struggle with that? Because I raise my hand. We struggle. See, even the grown-ups here, it's hard. It's hard. It really is hard. Then we talked about the secret of holiness, and we talked about really to encounter God and to encounter his presence and to become who he is. First, we have to know him. And uh, Mr. Cliff just did a fantastic job laying out the gospel and helping our kids experience the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And we really had just a fantastic time with Jesus on Saturday night. He met us where we were. We encountered him. Several of our kids got saved. Several of them received their prayer language. And some of them are going to share about that. And that the secret of holiness has to do with being close to him. And then on Sunday morning, I talked about the secret of peace. And the secret of peace has to do with knowing that God is with us, that we can, that we trust God in all things, in all situations. And so this is, this is my friend Six Foot Jesus. Some of you have, some of you have met Six Foot Jesus before. And so, oh, sorry, buddy. And some of you, it's your first time meeting Six Foot Jesus. But, um, and Six Foot Jesus, his skirt's a little short. He needs a little, he needs a little redressing. But one of the things we talked about was we talked about how sometimes we have a need in our life and we pray and we ask God. We say, how do we've got this bully at school? We've got this bully at work who's always mean to us. We've got a mom who's sick or our, our dog or our cat got lost and we need you to step in. We need your help. And when Jesus shows up, we feel like he didn't really show up in power. That Jesus, when he showed up, it didn't seem like he was really there. But I'm here to tell you, and what we talked about was that Jesus shows up, and sometimes it doesn't always look like we think it's going to look, but he is always, always doing the best thing for us. And so six-foot Jesus is not real Jesus, because six-foot Jesus, he can't stand up. And we love him. I love six-foot Jesus' face. He was in my car the other day when I went to the drive through and I forgot. <laughs> Elizabeth so kindly had strapped him in and seatbelted him in in the back seat of my car. And, <laughs> and I totally forgot. I went through a drive-thru. I got home and I thought, I can't believe. They must have thought I was crazy. So <laughs> poor six-foot Jesus, he's going to have a seat right here. <laughs> he's just gonna, he's gonna lean on you, Jan. There you go. He'll keep you warm. And so, so, but we talked about how the secret of peace is that we can trust God in with all things and in all situations. That there is nothing that happens in our life that He doesn't really show up for, even when we feel like maybe it doesn't seem like He showed up. I promise you, He shows up every single time. And what we're going to talk about today is this. The secret of destiny is actually the secret of life. Because this world is not our home. And God has a destiny and a purpose and a plan for every single one of us, doesn't he, guys? And you're going to live that out and you're going to do what he calls you to do. But the secret is, it's the secret of life. And that this world is not where we're staying. This world is not our home. And so I wanted to give these guys 
a little bit of a chance to share about some of the things that happened at camp this week. You can share something fun if you want to that you loved. You can share something that God did that's real special in your life. And it can be something, even if it didn't happen at camp, but maybe you had an experience with God in the past, you know, um, couple weeks. So I'm going to give you a chance to think about that while we show everybody our kids camp video. Okay, so you guys can turn around.
Thank you. Thank you for indulging us. You know, I got to tell you, um, Kids Camp does not happen without a fantastic group of parents and an unbelievable group of youth who come and who give hours and hours and hours of their time to make it a great time, a great weekend for these guys. Um, I had so many fantastic parents who helped teach, Deidre and Mike, and who helped do food and outside activities, and some of the others I've mentioned. Tiffany was there all weekend helping us out. Um, Alicia was with us. It was wonderful. Alicia Mercy led worship. Um, Arthur and uh, Matthew and Mercy headed up outside games, made sure all that was happening. There's something about a good group of students that helps kids. They're, they're never better than the grown-ups in one sense, but in the other sense, they make everything amazing. And so I can't tell all of you who came to help, and I'm sorry if I haven't mentioned somebody, but I can't just, I just can't even describe how amazing it is that you guys would give your weekend for these guys. We just so appreciate it and so love it. So now I want to give you guys a chance to share some things that God's doing in your life. So Anna, I'm going to let you start because I know that I can count on you to start. Come on. <laughs> You're all right. I just told her I'd stand up here with her and everything, because it's a little bit longer. Okay. I don't have to look at it. No, we wrote a little bit down just in case you okay. got a little lost. This is okay. this is just something that happens, so tell us one more. Um, one more thing? Yeah. Tell oh. them about what happened. So this is um, something that happened to her as she was in her bedroom, right? And it was around the time we were doing camp and stuff. But she just wanted to give a small testimony. Jan, mm -hmm. we talked to Jan about it. She asked. Mm -hmm. and said, yeah, you just go give a testimony. So I mean, you didn't know you were going to go first, but hallelujah, praise I God. I you thought know? I was going to go last. <laughs> so you thought you were going to go last, but you're all right. So, um, so, uh, okay. All right. so I was sitting in my bedroom, and I was singing a song, and I was reading my Bible. Then I blink, and I was sitting down in heaven. And I saw this golden pathway, three thrones, one on the right, one in the middle for, one on the right for Jesus, one in the middle for God, and one on the left for the Holy Spirit. And there's flowing water all around and under the th thrones. And I was sitting down and Jesus um, takes his hand and he says, take my hand, child. <laughs> then I faint. <laughs> <laughs> and I wake back up, and Jesus is still standing there. He has brown curly hair. He has a brown beard, brown eyes, a white robe, a red sash, brown sandals, and I can't make out the face. Um, I see the Holy Spirit. She's super nice to everyone. She can maybe shape ship. She has long blonde hair. God is huge and big. I walk on the golden pathway. I see... Um, golden fountains on the right and the left the, um, of the thrones. That was my favorite part. <laughs> um, I see a huge, very long table with tons of people, like a million. Then I walk on some clouds and maybe see some houses in the distance. Then I sit down at the feast and I see Kobe down beside me and some other animals with other people. Then I am about to take a bite and I blink and I'm back in my bedroom and daddy comes in and I say, and he says, it's time for bed. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> yes, so that was, that was her encounter she had. <laughs> yep. I think one of the things that's so cool is that God meets with us where we are. And when we give him our attention, he, he's always giving us his attention. But when we give him our attention, we have incredible encounters with him. And that's one of the things about being a kingdom investigator. God has secrets, but they're not secrets he's keeping from us. They're secrets he wants to tell us. The word says he tells his secrets to his friends. Yeah. And, um, and God is wanting to always speak and always 
talk to us and always tell us things. Yeah, yeah and always show up. All right, who else? Come here, Anna. That's okay. If Anna wants to share something, she can share something about Jesus. This is, this is the time that our kids get to share about Jesus. What would you like to share, Anna? You don't know? You want to just stand up here with me? No? Okay, you can have a seat. Or you want to go sit with your dad? It's up to you. All right, come on. I know you guys have big words because you talk to me. <laughs> oh, he will. I'll give Matthew a shot. Come on. Come on, Gage. Um, I'm, one of the things I love about doing kids' ministry is that, um, is that some of these guys, for the first time, are experiencing things, and that God shows up so big. I wasn't kidding when I said several, we had several kids who were baptized in the Holy Spirit and also got their prayer language, spoken tongues. It's just incredible, the worship that comes forth when they um, get in his presence. Hey, my name is Gage, and I'm going to be sharing the time that I met Jesus. So I've never been to church before because where I where I live, there are not good churches, and my family doesn't believe in God. So I came down here to visit the Andersons, and when I, while I was down here, Pastor Cliff was praying um, at kids' camp, and he was praying for me, and then I felt chills, like my bones were vibrating at a very high frequency. And as I was standing there with my eyes closed, praying with um, Cliff, he told, he was praying, and um, I, I saw Jesus welcoming me with open arms. And I felt it was amazing. And we had worship with Mercy and Cliff, and they also prayed for me. And then I was speaking in tongues the same day that I got prayed for and I met Jesus. I felt the Holy, Holy Spirit in my presence. And, uh, yeah. Hey, will you guys do me a favor? Because uh, Gage is going to head home in about, what, August 6th or so? Mm-hmm. Would you guys just stretch your hands f- towards him that God would... I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just so excited for you. I'm so excited. I, you know, when you came here, I was so excited even when I first met you. And um, I knew God wanted to do something big in you. And uh, Mike and Deidre and uh, the girls really did too. And I'm just so excited that God did that. So let's just pray for him, okay? God, we thank you so much for the work that you have done <laughs> in this young man, this bold, uh, strong young man, God. I thank you for his tender heart. God, I thank you for the protective nature that you have given him. God, that he is a guardian. God, I pray that you would guard his heart. God, as he goes home, that you would strengthen him, that you would uh, help him to stay close to you, that you would be close to him, that he would hear your voice. God, I pray that you would give him dreams and encounters in the night, Lord God. God, that he would see and hear you clearly and stand, God, in the way that you have brought him in, God. We pray that you would just guard again those things that you've put in his heart. And we just love you, God, for doing that, God, and we trust him with you, Lord, and we trust you (laughs) with him. God, and I thank you so much in your name. Amen. Amen. Love you, brother. (laughs) Oh, I'm getting tissues. I put mascara on today for the camera, so we'll see how that goes. (laughs) All right, who else would like to go? You guys, you want... All right, Matthew, come on up. (laughs) You got it. (laughs) I'm telling you, Matthew was a champ at camp this year, man. He he was, uh, our youth, I can't even describe to you how amazing they are. They would do things, and then they would come back and say, okay, what's next? Before they left, several of them would say, what time do you need me here tomorrow? They just were so proactive and so amazing, and I just... I'm so grateful. Well, I didn't know that I was going to be speaking. <laughs> but um, this past weekend was amazing. I remember when I was 12, that's when I had always known the Lord. 
but um, I never actually got to know him. When I was 12, I went to my first youth camp, similar to this one, and uh, I remember that same feeling that all these kids went through, and getting to watch them go through that and getting to be a part of that was an amazing experience. Uh, I am grateful that I got to help teach these kids because that was amazing because all these kids are awesome. Um, but yeah, that's about it. You don't have, you don't have to go long, man. All right, what I'm going to do is come on up here. Come here. Remember, you don't have to share something about God. Just share something that you enjoyed about camp. Come on, Jayla. Come on, Madison. Come on. These are my these are my six my shy sixth graders. My favorite part of camp was water day because we had a big slide and a whole bunch of games. We had water balloon fights and the water slide was really big. And when everyone went inside to go change, we were able to go down the slide over and over and over. <laughs> the privilege of being a sixth grader. <laughs> That's Madison. Um, I guess I like um, the battleship game because you just got to hit people with water balls. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> balloons. Yeah. And that's the screen thing. We played live battleship where they were on opposite sides of a thing and they would lob balloons over trying to hit somebody on the other side that they couldn't see. It was fantastic. <laughs> come on, Ariel. Come on, Kiva. You guys can have a seat. Don't worry. I'm going to call all of you guys up here, so just be prepared. Something that you enjoyed about camp this year. I enjoyed Water Day, too, because I got to squirt Matthew in the face. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and also... Somebody apparently gave me a water squirter <laughs> so I could squirt people with it. It was a water gun. And that's uh, so why I liked because Zoe and Eli got it to come over here, and they live far, far away. And I really don't get to see them that much. And we liked, and we liked that her mom came up and singed on stage, and everybody wanted to see her. And my favorite part was when you... And also, my favorite part of the bus is when you showed six foot Jesus <laughs> <laughs> at, at Water Day. You were like, this is six foot Jesus. <laughs> it's six so foot funny. Jesus is pretty memorable, isn't it? Yes, he is. It's pretty funny. Especially Kiva. Especially you like Kiva. I liked the games on Water Day. When, they're in the ex when the other team was on the escape room, we played dodgeball. I enjoyed Battleship, and the first day was pretty nice. Cool. I'm so glad. The first day was pretty nice. Yeah. All right. Are you ready? Come on. Come on, Madison. Uh, I'll hold it for you, so you just talk. <laughs> what did you enjoy? Given, given, uh, given does not enjoy talking to the microphone just yet. He will one day. But um, his favorite part, uh, Mercy um, asked the, I think, I can't remember exactly how it went, but at the end of Water Day, um, she asked the kids if they, to pick some different counselors to some different leaders that they could slime, and Given got to dump slime on Matthew. And then Mercy. He did mixtures. He, 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 what did you mix? Chunky, um, that. Applesauce slime, and I can't remember what the other was. The slimy slime? Yeah. The gooey slime? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then Mercy dumped a whole entire bucket, a five-gallon bucket on his head. <laughs> My head? No, Matthew's head. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what would you like to share, Madison? Um, my favorite um, part was water day, and we had great worship. We did have great worship, didn't we? It was really good. All right, come on. Come on, Jordan. <laughs> All right, one thing that you liked. I liked Water Day because we get to throw, um, we had a, wa a balloon fight and water thing. I don't know what it's called. Yeah, good. You liked uh, anything else that you enjoyed? 
and battleship. What did you enjoy? I enjoyed worship and prayer and water days because we got to get wet and we got we get to get other people wet. It's always fun not to just get wet but get other people wet. Did you guys have anything you wanted to share? You don't have to. It's okay. Come on. If you do, if you don't, it's okay. You can go have a seat with your dad. Yeah, you can talk about Jesus. Come on up here, Samuel. Samuel loves to talk about Jesus. You didn't have to go to camp to talk about Jesus. Come on up here, Anna. All right, what do you want to say, my friend? I want to say that I want to thank God for making us and for giving us the Holy Spirit. Me too. Me too. All right. I want to say, never mind. <laughs> Anna, somehow I knew you were going to be a little bit of a jokester there. I felt like you were going to you were going to pull that one out on me. <laughs> I'd like to say, never mind. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things I love about kids camp is water day and one of the reasons I love it is because our kids love it so much and uh, God is in the business of using whatever he can to draw us to him and God is a playful God you know um, if you know me and some of you know me much better than others I'm a bit of a jokester I, I crack up I crack dry jokes a lot of times when just under my breath and warm places <laughs> and uh I, I, people tell me, you know, I, I feel like a big kid sometimes, and I think that's because God's a playful God. He is not up in heaven with his finger wagging at us and being mean. He is a playful God, and so take the opportunity to, <laughs> to really enjoy him. God is, is, he enjoys us, and we are meant to enjoy him. We are meant to enjoy him. So, um, I'm looking at my time and just deciding where, what the Lord wants to do in the next couple minutes. Um, I was reading the other day and I came across this quote on Facebook and it said this, so long as the creature is puffed up with a sense of his own ability to respond to God's requirements, he will never become a beggar at the footstool of divine mercy. Now, I know that's quite a big quote, and I know that Bill will put it up on the screen in, in a second. I read that, and I thought to myself, what he's really saying there is that as long as we think we can do it, and we use our stuff to do it, we are never truly going to come into God's presence to allow him to shape us into what he has for us, shape us into the destiny that he has for us. And we have got to put aside our own ability. I had this experience with the Lord one time. Uh, some of you guys may know I probably have a little bit of a problem with pride. I like myself a lot. probably stems from some insecurity in there somewhere, but I do. I tend to, I enjoy myself. I think I'm pretty funny. I think I'm pretty smart to my own detriment. And I was, uh, I was in a Bible study years and years ago, and uh, I can't remember what was happening, but I, in my head, I had said this little saying, use your power for good and not for, not for evil, you know? And I heard the Lord say, I don't want you to use your power for anything. And this goes right along with that. We are not to use our power, but his power. He wants to be big in us. One of the wonderful things about working with kids and being a kid is you're not so worried about everything that you have to do. You get to be. You're becoming and you're learning and you're growing. But there's such an authenticity about kids that is just, just wonderful. So... Um, we've been reading them, reading to them during kids' camp from this book called Tell Me the Secrets. And years ago, I mean, this book is probably 20, 25 years old. 
uh, Max Lucado got together with a guy named Ron Ziciani, and Max Lucado wrote some stories for the wonderful art. Um, Bill, you can go to that next slide about the secret of life. And so I'm going to read you a story this morning, if you can hang with me. Y'all hang with me? Yeah. All right. I put my contacts in today, so they get a little fuzzy. Just be patient with me. And then what I love about this storybook is it starts out with these three kids, and one of them hits a baseball through their neighbor's window. And as it turns out, the, neighbor is an older, the neighbors are an older couple, and they're like grandparents, and the kids start coming over and talking to them, and they're learning about Je Jesus. And, and Grandpa Josh has this book of secrets, and it has all these stories in it, and stories about God. And so throughout this book right here, each picture has a story with it. And I'm going to read you the story of the secret of life. Matthew 5, 12 says, Rejoice and be glad because you have a great reward waiting for you in heaven. And this is the very last story in the book. Landon swallowed hard and folded the note. His teacher watched as he put it in his pocket. Is something wrong, she asked. May I be excused, he asked her. My sister is waiting for me in the hall. Sure. Shannon's face was tear-streaked. Behind her stood Eric, his hands on her shoulders and his face solemn. How did you find out, Landon asked. Melva called my mom, Eric replied. Mom called the school office. Josh is at the hospital and something is wrong with his heart. Melva was the only person in the waiting room. When she saw Eric, Landon, and Shannon, she smiled. Josh will be glad to see you, she said. Will they let us in, Landon asked. For a few minutes, Shannon sat next to Melva is he going to be okay? Melva spoke softly. Josh is very sick. His heart is weak. The doctors just don't know. Her voice was firm as she spoke, but her eyes were filled with tears. You can come in now. It was the nurse at the door. They followed her into the intensive care ward. A circle of 10 rooms surrounded the nurse's station. Behind each glass wall was a patient. Some were bandaged. Others were in traction. Others, like Josh, had tubes inserted in their arms and wires taped to their skin. They'd never seen Josh so still. He lay on his back, eyes closed. Above his head, a monitor was beeping with each heartbeat. A plastic mask connected oxygen to cover his nose and mouth. It helps him to breathe, Melva explained. Landon and Eric stopped at the foot of the bed, but Shannon went up to Josh's side. She put her little hand in his big one and squeezed. Can he talk, she asked. Not with the oxygen tube, Melva said, but he can hear you, and he opened his eyes. Look who's here to see you, Melva tried to sound cheerful. Josh lifted his eyebrows. Eric and Landon walked around the bed and stood at the side of their old friend. <clears throat> They'd never seen him look so tired, so weak. He opened his hand, and both Eric and Landon held it. They didn't know what to say, so no one said anything. Josh's eyes went from face to face. After a few moments, Josh lifted his hand and began to draw in the air. That means he wants to write something, Melva interpreted. He has something to tell us. Just then, the nurse entered the room. Oh, I'm sorry. With a pat on his stomach, Josh scrawled three words and handed them to his wife. She read them, nodded softly, and, ass and assured Josh, I'll take I'll take them there and read it. Just then, the nurse entered the room. I'm sorry, she instructed, but visiting time is over. You can return at 4 o'clock. Josh looked again at each of the children. He forced a smile from beneath the mask. They told him goodbye. Melva leaned over and kissed his forehead. We'll be back, she whispered, and left the room. He closed his eyes. As they walked down the hall, Landon, and Melva, Landon asked Melva, what did he write? She handed him the pad. The handwriting was difficult to read. Ob, obstab, obsta, obster, no, it's obstet, obstetrical, Melva said. He wrote obstetrical ward. What kind of a ward is that? Shannon asked. It's not a, a ward, it's a ward. A part of the hospital. Josh wants me to take you there to tell you something. What was the third word Eric spoke up? Secret. Melva smiled. He wants me to read you a secret from the book. Landon had no idea what obstetrical meant, but he didn't feel like asking. He wasn't in the mood to talk much. Neither was anyone else. It was a quiet group that rode to the elevator and down to the lower floor. Only Shannon spoke. 
The hospital is a sad place, she commented. What you are about to see may change your mind, Melba responded as she put her arm around Shannon's shoulder. The elevator door opened to a room of bright colors and excited people. Bright balloons were painted on one wall and a colorful aquarium stood in front of the other. Straight ahead were the backs of a row of people, people all looking through a large glass window. They were laughing and pointing and lifting up small children so they could see. It's the baby section, Eric exclaimed. This is where my cousin was born. Can we see the baby, Shannon asked. That's why we're here, Melva answered. All four went to the window. Shannon was just tall enough to peek in and see the newborns. They're so little, she exclaimed. How old are they, Landon asked, as he looked at the row of bassinets. Some were born this morning, Melva answered. They are brand new. It was easy to be amazed at the little bundles wrapped in blankets. Most were asleep, tiny faces soft and relaxed, but a couple of them were crying loudly. They must be hungry, Eric laughed. They've had quite a journey, Melva added. Man, Landon observed, this room is just the opposite of the room where Josh is. Here, everyone is happy and excited. Up there, they are quiet and afraid. In a way, it is different, Melva agreed, but in another, it is very similar. How, Landon asked. Why don't we sit down? I'll let Josh explain it to you. They went to a couch and took a seat. Melva spoke as she took the book of secrets from the key from her purse. Josh loves to come here. At least once a week, he comes to visit. Does he like the baby, Shannon asked. That's just part of it. He also likes what God teaches him here. What? Some time ago, he came and brought the book. And as he sat here, he wrote a letter to you. A letter he wanted me to read if anything happened to him. Would you like to hear it? Sure, they nodded. Melba began to read. Dear Landon, Eric, and Shannon, this is a very important letter. Melba is reading to you because something has happened to me. She brought you here because I want you to learn one of life's important secrets, the secret of death. Very few people understand death. Most are afraid of it. Most try to ignore it. Hardly anyone seems to talk about it. But God wants you to understand it, and he doesn't want you to be scared. Many think death is when you go to sleep. They're wrong. Death is when you finally wake up. Death is when you see what God has seen all along. I want you to do something for me. I want you to think about these babies. Imagine what has happened to them. They have just left one place and entered another. Just a few hours ago, each one of them was in mommy's tummy. They were safe, they were warm, they had all they could eat. All they had to do was sleep. Suddenly, they were pushed into a strange world that they had never seen before. Imagine you would speak to one of these infants before he was born. What if you told him what was about to happen? What if you said, in just a few minutes, you're going to leave this tummy. Your time here is about up. Before you know it, you will be in a room full of people and lights and noises and smells. I don't want to go, the baby might say. I like it here. Besides, I don't know what people is. Oh, you don't need to worry. It's not bad out there, you tell the infant. I mean, you have to go to school and take baths. What's a school and a bath? None of that sounds good to me. I like it right here. But it's dark in there. It's crowded and cramped. Don't worry. You'll be glad you came out. Thanks, but no thanks. I'm happy where I am. I want to stay right here. Landon chuckled. The thought of a baby not wanting to be born. The baby doesn't have a choice, Melva. He has to come out. Yes, Eric said, smiling. Who would want to stay inside a tummy forever? That's exactly what Josh was explaining, Melva answered. Listen to what he says next. You kids, there comes a time in life when, like a baby, you have to make a journey. Just like a baby has to leave the tummy and enter the world, there comes a time for us to leave this world and go to heaven. And most people don't want to go. We act like the little baby in the tummy. We like it where we are. The world may not be perfect, but at least we know it. At least it's familiar, and we don't want to leave. Melva's voice choked up as she read the next sentence. Eric, Landon, and Shannon, it's time for me to leave. I feel like I know these characters. I'm sorry. 
It's my turn to go and be with God in heaven. I don't want you to be afraid. I'm not. It's my time. I accept that. It's okay to be sad, but don't be angry. Don't be scared. God knows what he's doing. I will miss you, but we won't be separated for long. Someday your time will come to leave. And when it's your time, I want you to know I'll be waiting for you. I'll be there when you get there. I'll be one of those proud people standing at the glass. And standing beside me will be your father. Your heavenly father will be waiting. Don't forget this secret. Love, Josh. Melva had barely finished reading the letter when her name was paged over the speaker system telling her to return to the intensive care unit. She swallowed hard, looked at the kids, and said, let's go. When they reached Josh's floor, the kids waited outside as Melva went in. Though she was gone for only a few minutes, it seemed like hours. When Melva returned, her face looked pale and sad. She sat on the couch and wept softly. He said he dozed off and never woke up. He's gone away, Shannon asked. No, Shannon, he hasn't gone away. He's gone home. He's finally gone home. It's the day he has always dreamed about. Mel looked at Landon and Eric. This was in his hands. She handed Landon his baseball, the same baseball he had hit through the window. On it, Josh had scribbled 1 Corinthians 15, 51. What does the verse say, Landon said? Eric picked up a Bible from the table and looked it up. I'm telling you this strange and wonderful secret. We shall not all die, but we shall all be given new bodies. Sounds like something Josh would say, Shannon said. I can't believe he's dead, Melva. Landon began to cry. Oh, Landon, he isn't dead. He's alive. He's more alive than he's ever been. He is just not here. What do we do now, Eric asked. What do we do? We prepare for heaven like Josh did. His entire life was given to God. And since, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble seeing. <laughs> and since he lived for God on earth, he will live with God in heaven. Melva looked at the three children standing in front of her. She thought for a moment about all they had learned together, lessons God had taught them about growth and peace and love, the stories about the Wemmicks and Punchinella and the Song of the King. God used Josh to teach us a lot, she said, pulling Shannon onto her lap and putting her arms around the boys. We will miss him, but we will see him again. And when we do, we will be together forever. That is what God has promised, and that is no secret. I know death touches all of us. I know grief touches all of us. But our secret in life is this is not our home. This is not our ultimate destination. I think sometimes we feel like life is a little bit like whack-a-mole. We're just trying to hit problems when they pop up. But really, life should be lived like whack-a-mole when you're trying to experience everything that God has. When songs on the radio come on that have to do with this place not being our home, I tear up every single time. There's something that resonates in me about how this is not my final destination. That we are living for something greater. In John 14, Jesus is hanging out with the disciples before his death. And uh, in John 13, he washes their feet. At the beginning of John 14, he says, don't let your hearts be troubled. And then he says this, my father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place I am going. I was reading through John 14, obviously, a few times, and I was just amazed at how many things we pull out of this passage of Scripture. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I go to prepare a place for you. Don't let your hearts be troubled. You know who I am because you know the Father. 
just over and over. It's, it's Jesus' last things. This morning, I, I've been preparing for this. I've known I was speaking for weeks. And uh, last night I went to bed knowing that I was going to talk about destiny and life. But really, that's all I had. I woke up this morning and texted a few of my friends and said, I need you guys to pray for me. I have nothing. And they laughed because when I say I have nothing, usually I still have a bunch. But I really had nothing. And uh, the Lord really spoke to me this morning about the secret of life. And when Jesus, and, and I, it stresses me out to come in here and not have anything. And I knew the kids were going to give testimonies. So I thought, well, maybe, maybe it's going to just kind of go, you know. Um, but as I was reading John 14, two, three, four times this morning, Jesus was not stressed about his last moments with his disciples. He wasn't stressed about that last time they had together. He wasn't stressed, but he was saying the things that would bring comfort and joy to their hearts that they could chew on and eat on and sit on for years and years to come. He has gone to prepare a place for us, and our job is to do as much as we can to help other people go with us. Sometimes we get so frustrated with this world of turmoil and trouble I want to tell you, God is playful, so there is joy in this world. We are free from the curse. We don't have to struggle under the curse of toil. But there is a groaning and a wait because we know that there is heaven waiting for us. And our destiny and our purpose is to live our life to the fullest like that whack-a-mole game. I mean, that clock is going down and it's like, bam, got that one for Jesus. Bam, got that one for Jesus. Bam, took my kids to an amusement park. Bam, had a great date night with my wife. Bam, got that one for Jesus. Bam, got to talk to the lady at Walmart. Bam, I spent time with Jesus, had an encounter in heaven, and living life to the fullest. Because otherwise it just becomes a rat race of us trying to deal with problems as they pop up. God doesn't want us to be in the rat race. He wants us to be in rest and to be in peace. And the secret of our destiny is that we, <laughs> we are destined to live this life to the fullest, that this world is not our home. Father, I thank you so much that you have called us to bigger things. Can I have our prayer teams come up? Can we just have our prayer teams come up? And uh, kids, if you, I would like some of you guys to come up and help pray for people. So would you join one of these teams? Come on up here and join one of these teams. Okay. And prayer teams, if any of you guys want to respond to this, just find somebody to pray with you, okay? If you are struggling, if you are struggling with feeling like you're playing the whack-a-mole game, just trying to deal with the problems that pop up, I believe God has peace and joy and freedom for you today from that, that he can impart into you purpose and destiny and life and switch your focus from what is right in front of us right now and to where he wants you to be. God wants to free you from the rat race. Yeah, hallelujah. So let me pray for you. And as I pray, just come on up and let these guys pray for you. Father God, thank you that you want to free us from the rat race. God, that we are not bound by this little tiny space, Lord God. But God, you are the ruler of the universe who can impart into us peace and joy and freedom and life. God, we want to go after life with a vengeance here on earth so that we can enjoy heaven with you. God, that we don't live just in this place. God, that this place is not our home, but you have called us to a higher place. We're strangers and aliens in this land, Lord. But you have called us to be free from the weight of this world to give you that weight 
so that we can enjoy life, Lord Jesus. In your name, amen. Thank you, guys. And please come back Wednesday night. We're going to have some fun. And uh, thank you guys for being patient with us today. Wasn't that awesome, though? It was really a good word. You made us cry, Sharon. <laughs> Is there anybody in here that wasn't crying? I don't think so. Anyway, do you have something? I'm not going to get a chance to speak to all the men, but I'm Marcus. I want to personally invite you to the men's meeting on August 13th, all the men. If you're a man in this house, I'm inviting you right now, okay? It's going to be a very special men's meeting. We're going to be uh, doing some uh, kingdom business for the house. So uh, I, want to, I want every man to be a part of it, and we expect the Holy Spirit to move and, and what he's going to do in this next season in this men's ministry. So... I am personally inviting you. If you are a man in this house, I am personally inviting you now. So please come. Please come. Thank you. Five o'clock.